Mike Owens here. Today I'm joined by Hurricane Shane Virgos, who makes his return to the cage, 14th of April, headline and PFL3, versus Olivier over Mercier. Shane, always a pleasure. How are things with you today? My oh, man, thanks for having me. Uh, things are good. Just came back from the boxing gym. It's like a two-hour and 15-minute drive home, so it's one of those sacrifices that you got to make. We do this once a week, go to the boxing gym, get some high-level work with different guys from all around the world at this one specific spot in Brooklyn. Um, it sucks, but it's like a good suck. You know I mean, mm. um, I want to talk about a quote that you that came off from your mouth a couple of months, weeks ago. You talked about when this fight was announced that this feels like your title fight. Um, yeah. just over a month out, is that still the feeling going in, going into final preparation? A hundred percent. I'm I'm leaving no stone stone unturned for this fight. I'm I'm doing everything I possibly can to make sure I, to to ensure this victory. I, I'm this is my title fight. I'm treating it like it's a title fight. He's the guy that's coming in to defend his belt. I'm telling him to bring it because I'm bringing it back home. Yeah, this is what I'm looking at. I'm looking at it like this is the title fight. First and foremost, first subject I want to get into is obviously the fact that you'll be making your PFL debut at 155. You'll be moving up yes. to lightweight. Obviously, you'd signed to fight Marais back in November and a featherweight in that fight fell through. So why did why have you made the move to go up a division to lightweight? Yeah, I think the lightweight division just makes more sense because of the amount of times you're fighting, you're fighting four times in eight months and uh, it wouldn't be conducive to me, to, to my style, to my performances to... to to try to make 145 that many times to be in that short amount of time and everybody knows i'm not a, i'm definitely no small uh featherweight so to cut that weight to, to go back into a fight camp right after a fight to go back into another weight cut right after it and then again and then again i'm like you know what my body's gonna just be breaking down that's kind of what happened. the weight cut was weighing on top of me so just have to focus on the weight cut the whole, the whole time was it was fun brutal so this time i can focus more so on performance it doesn't mean i'm going to come into this fight undersized because i will not be a small lightweight at all i'm, I'm yeah. going to be a, a nice size lightweight but just to focus on more performance and not so much the freaking scale is going to be a huge weight off my shoulders talking about size i've always found your your weight cut to featherweight probably the most preposterous in the sport i've never known how you've made 145 pounds but different story for a different day um you mentioned there about the season format the fact that it's four fights <laughs> in just over six months um, obviously your style is very a very entertaining one, but it's also a, a style, uh, we've talked about this, like the war style that you have. Um, with that being said, and the fact that these fights are such fast turnarounds, is there any impetus from your end to change your style, perhaps? No, it's one of those things I really can't, I can't try to focus on that, especially for the first fight. I mean, I'm going to the first fight at night. I'm not going to try to focus too much on that second fight. I'm, I'm thinking this this is one off, a one-off fight because I'm going into this one fresh. The second fight and the second fight camp is going to be completely different than this one because I'm basically going right back into it. But uh, it, if anything, it, it excites me more to to get the fight finished as quick as possible. You know what I mean? You want to get in there and you want to get the hell out of there quick because you got to do this shit again. So if anything, it motivates me more to get to get finished. That this is obviously a different a different style of format. You you've been used to the to the ranking style of of competition where you fight the the guy above or below you in the rankings, but obviously you're going yeah. into the tournament style. Is that something that you anticipate to be harder or, or easier? No, oh, hell yeah, it's gonna be hard. It's gonna be the hardest thing I've ever done. It's not even. It's there's no question. This is gonna be mentally and physically grueling. I know what it is. I mean, you see, you see these champions from last season all, all saying how hard it was, and I can only imagine four fights, eight months. It's not necessarily the fights. It's the fight camps. The, the, the you're basically living in fight camp for eight months. That is a long fucking time. So. I'm fully expecting this to be one of the hardest years of my life, but one of the most fulfilling years as well. Give me your scouting report on OAM. What does he do well, and what does he perhaps do do poorly that you think you can exploit in this matchup? No, oh, he's he's good at winning. I mean, he's on he's on a six fight <laughs> win streak. He's good at winning, so I'll give him that right off the bat. Um, but I think I'm better in certain areas. I don't want to go into the obvious. The, I mean, the obvious specifics. I think I'm better on feet. Um. Yeah. It's going to come down to, to my takedown offense and his takedown offense. And I think, I think when we're on the feet, I think he's going to try to strike a little bit. He's going to start feeling that I'm getting the better of it. And I, I know for a fact he's going to shoot. Uh, I hope after getting his that knockout in his last fight that it gives him more confidence in his feet and he, and he wants to stand and bang. That'd be fucking awesome. But I just don't see it, especially for it being the first fight. I think he's going to try to play it safe and try to take me down. Um, but like I said, I really hope that he comes into this fight trying to, trying to bang it out. That'd be, that'd be fucking awesome. But I'm ready for him to be trying to take me down right off the bat on so. Look, you've come in. You've come into the PFL. Obviously, the PFL has, has PFL has a lot of big names. Pettis, Caleb, Brendan doing all the good stuff they've been doing. But you yep. come in as, as as very much the new poster boy. I feel like obviously main eventing in your first fight. 
are you feeling a certain level of pressure going into this PFL debut? No, nah, no extra pressure. I mean, there's already pressure that I put on myself to, to win and to have a fun performances, to have good performances. So any extra pressure, I don't really – it doesn't affect me. I, I know there's a bunch of other factors that go into it, but I don't really – get bothered by that shit the more pressure the better I, make me the main event make me the guy that everybody's expecting to win that's that, that's fine I, that, I don't care about what anyone else thinks I'm thinking about the pressure from myself the pressure that I have that I put on myself to perform so anything extra is is uh, static it's white noise no that makes total sense obviously since the last time we spoke massive um, personal change in terms of the organisation you're fighting under you now obviously moved to PFL from from UFC, obviously quite a highly yeah. touted move from organizations. Um, I'd just like to give, if you could give me a little bit of a reflection on your emotions following the move from UFC to PFL. Yeah, I have zero complaints, just to be honest. And I'm not just saying that to, to kiss to kiss PFL's ass. Man. I, like, I, I really have, they treat me fucking awesome. They treat me really fucking well. Uh, it feels um, almost more like a, a partnership more so. I, and I feel more like... Uh, like, you know, they, they, the UFC fighters, the independent contractors, I, it doesn't feel the same with, with the PFL. I don't know how to really explain it. It just feels more personable. I have personal relationships. I can I feel like I can talk to to the, to the higher ups that whenever I want, like, with Don, like Don Davis and, and Pete, um, all, all the guys that work for the, for the staff PFL. Uh, it's very open line of communication where I really didn't have that much with the UFC because they have a million fighters on the roster, which is understandable. But um, yeah, no, no complaints at all, man. I, I love it. Um. Was was the move solely a business decision? Was this solely a monetary decision, or was there a particular aspect of your time at the UFC that you maybe weren't happy with, and that you were looking for a change as a result? No, it strictly was that you got to strike with while the iron's hot, and the iron was hot. Uh, man, they gave me a phenomenal deal that I I couldn't say no to. And then not only that, I saw I see the the the, the growth in the PFL, and I see the long term of. I, I see their vision and I see where they're headed and I wanted to jump on it before it got to there so I can be part of that. So I, I feel like I, I got on it right at the right time too. I don't want to maybe, I don't want to air out any dirty laundry, but I remember, I remember when, when you signed with the PFL, I sent you a message congratulating you and I, I checked our messages and the, the response that you gave me, you said, this, this is time for me to get paid like a pro athlete. So I'd yes, just like to, exactly. to, to, to if you obviously you can't go into specifics, but if you could just reflect on what that quote means in relation to, to the move. Yeah, so I, the, the deal I got is phenomenal. Like my purses per fight are going to be, without, without getting into detail, I, they're going to be a lot more than my show and win money for the UFC. Like I, it's basically three or four fights to equal one fight with the PFL. Uh, oh. That you you guys can look up the reports on what I got paid for my last fights, and I got paid good in the UFC. I I got paid good. I didn't get paid great, but now I'm getting fucking paid great. I cannot complain about money. Money is one thing that I cannot complain about being in the PFL. And that's why I signed with them so I can make sure when this is all said and done, I look back at my family, look back at my daughters, and I say that shit was worth it. It was a fun run. I did. I I lived my dream. I wanted to be a pro fighter since I was freaking 13 years old. I went out, I did it, and I made a beautiful life for for myself and for my family. And that I can't put a price tag on that, man, that, that means the world to me. When I'm on my deathbed looking back, I'm going to be like, you know what, man, we did some cool shit. That was, that was a fun ride. We, we made it worth it. I don't want to think about Shane Burgos on his deathbed, but I do get the sentiment of your point. Obviously it's about, <laughs> it's about uh, providing for, for your three daughters now, if memory serves. Congratulations on. Yeah. On that's, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Two and a half. <laughs> two and a half. Yeah, two and a half. Third, third, third to be, third to be my mistake. Obviously you're yeah. making the move up to, to lightweight though. And obviously as, as you've left the UFC, there would have been a lot of tantalizing matchups at 155 for you over there. Is there a particular name that you wish you had at fought in terms of a UFC lightweight? Nah, man, there's, there's, I, I, that's a, that's a loaded question because I can't even think off the top of my head because the, the, the division is, is fucking stacked. Hmm. The division is stacked in the UFC, but it's also, it's also stacked in the PFL. The same thing with 45 in the UFC and, and 45 in the PFL. Hmm. So I, I can't give you a name right off the rip, but uh, ask me again in a couple of days or something like that. <laughs> a lot of people were, were anticipating the fight between yourself and Brendan, and I know there'd been a, a little bit of friendly back and forth. We have a friendly exchange. I think you both they told each other how, how much respect that you've had for each other. Um, obviously he's competing at 145, but is is the fight with Brendan a possibility in terms of a PFL pay per view in 2024, perhaps? I, I mean, I'll, I'll never say never, but uh, 45 is it's 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 going to be hard. I mean, but money money talks, so I, <laughs> we'll we'll see. But uh, sole focus on OAM right now and at 55. 
So 45 is, is for right now, this season's 55. So that door for right now is closed. Of course. Very quickly speaking about another man who's just signed with the, recently with the PFL. Um, give me your thoughts on Jake Paul signing with the organization. And do you think this is a good move for, for the sport and for the actual fighters themselves? Hell yeah, it's a good move. It's a great move. The guy's always talking about fighter pay and stuff like that. So if he's an advocate, if he's if he's gonna advocate for fighter pay, then I'm all I'm all for it. No matter whether whether you like the guy, or you hate the guy, you got an opinion of the guy. Everybody has an opinion, mm-hmm. and that's what you want. You, I mean, if you have an opinion, that means you're gonna tune in to watch him lose. You're gonna tune in to watch him win. And who's not gonna be excited to watch this guy fight? I mean, like you want to see how he's gonna do, especially at MMA. Like nobody has a fucking clue how he's gonna do. So he's just bringing more eyeballs, more attention to to, to my organization, which is gonna in turn be more revenue for me. So yeah, yeah I'm, I'm all for it. No, that makes total sense. I want to ask you a question, and this is a difficult question to ask and a difficult question to answer. But when you think about someone like Kayla, who's been the poster, the poster girl of the UF of the PFL for such a long time, whenever Kayla wins a world championship or wins a fight, people go, "Oh, but she couldn't do it in the UFC." That's always the the rebuttal. But Shane, as you come over, you prove that you can do it in the UFC at the highest level. So I'm wondering when you win when you win this world title, which is the goal for, for the end of the year, do you think you'll get the respect from the wider audience as having won a world title at the PFL? I think so. I I, I definitely think so. But I, I also think that the, the division is like people are thinking that uh you come to the PFL, you're gonna get easy fights. Are you out of your fucking mind? Like if you must be a casual because like I said, the, the, look at look at the division. Look at the guys that are in, in my division at 155, especially. But you look at 45 too, like on and all the other divisions. Like there's some fucking killers in these divisions. Like world class athletes that come from world class gyms. I'm not looking at this like like this is gonna be a walk in the park. This is gonna be the hardest thing I've ever done. These are gonna. You give me the the worst guy on, on on the roster. It's still gonna be a hard fight, considering the fact that I'm gonna have X amount of fights right before it. You know what I mean? So I'm looking at this like this is not gonna be easy. It's not gonna be easy at all. So, but but you know what? Honestly, like look, but. Once it's done and I and, and I, I win these four fights straight, it's gonna make it that much more worth it. There's, there, I, I I didn't take the easy way. There, I, I took the road less traveled, and, and it's gonna make the difference at the end. No, of course. Last question from me, um, because you've got a very much very much a tantalizing year ahead of you. Because if you do everything right at the end of this of this calendar year, you will be a world champion. Uh, obviously, there's not many people who can say that. Everyone in the tournament can, yeah. but not many people on the planet can say at the end of the year they can accomplish the the goal of their career. Um, yeah. just, I just want to talk about what that moment means to you, and that the fact that you've got very much a target to aim for for the end of the year. Oh, that's gonna mean the world to me. You know, like my 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 daughter sees the boy. She we watch fights sometimes. She's like, Dad, what? Well, uh, you 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 always win. Where's why, where's your belt? Why didn't you get a belt? And I'm like, oh, I just didn't get a chance to get one yet. And she's like, why not? But you always win. Like she has, she's she's only six years old. So she doesn't understand. So I'm just thinking about once I get that belt and I'll be able to bring that back. And be like there you go. You always said it. There there it is. Daddy brought that shit home. So that that's what I'm. That that's all the motivation. Honestly, the money is awesome. Uh, the money is it it means a lot to me. But just that moment that I'm thinking about right there, that's gonna mean way more than any million dollars, honestly. I love it. I think that's the perfect place for us to end. So, Shane, thank you so much for your time. It's truly always a pleasure to, to catch up. I'm so happy to see you in the PFL and this move that you've made. I look forward to seeing you back in action next month. I appreciate you, man. Thank you. We'll talk again soon, all right? Perfect.